on the job very long. Yes, you're a few first, weeks. You're the first person to ever hold this job, correct? <laughs> so yes. I, I have to imagine that alone uh, means that you have a mon monumental task in front of you. What's it like to have a job with so much importance that no one's ever had before? Well, uh, thank you for the question. Actually, it, it's a mixture of both. Uh, the president made the decision to put uh, my role into a dual position. So I've served as the associate director for technology in the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. That's been around for about a decade or two. Uh, what's new is the notion of being the chief technology officer, and that has been to build upon the success of what the president saw throughout his campaign that he's been talking about for, for quite some time, actually, and that is to harness the power and potential of technology and innovation into the fabric of our nation's policymaking, into our economy, and so forth. I, and I would imagine that this is really a marked change in where we're headed as a country, that technology really has to have a seat at the table in terms of policy discussions because it's so integral to implementing those policies? That's exactly right. There isn't a policy decision today that doesn't have some component of technology that's involved. For the most part, you use technology to basically implement a strategy that's already been developed. Now what the president said is that he wants the technology aspect to be part and parcel of the policymaking process on the front end. I want to ask you about this DTV transition because we're obviously immersed in it. Yes, and I thank NBC12. I saw the, the, the call centers and yeah. the capabilities coming in on Friday night. <laughs> thank you for doing your part. Yeah, we have people around the clock. But it's interesting that you bring up those, those phone booths uh, and, the, and the calls that we're taking because one of the questions that we get probably more than anything is, yeah. why was this necessary? I got TV without a problem <laughs> for 25 years, and now all of a sudden you've, you've flipped me upside down. I know it wasn't a decision made for this administration, but Oh, but it's a very important why, decision. Why and it needed to be done. That's a great question, and I thank you for asking it. If you think about it, the United States has a lot of assets that we'll be using to be competitive in the next decade and beyond. One of those assets is spectrum, the air. It turns out that our uh, broadcasting system, when it was using the analog waves, took up a lot of room on that highway. And uh, frankly, we were not able to take advantage of all that you could do with that uh, space. But by advances in technology, you could deliver four times as many channels using the same amount of frequency. So what we were able to do is about several years ago, we said, how much would the market value that air if we could transition it from the analog to the digital spectrum? And could you imagine $19 billion the private sector said, we would like to have the right to have access to those airwaves. Now, what will they do with it? We envision broadband services that will hit uh, much larger ranges of the country, that you would have high-speed broadband right to your mobile device, whether you're in southwest Virginia, south side, the eastern shore, Harrisonburg, and beyond. It, and that capacity is only capable if you can use that very, very important uh, uh, use of spectrum. In a sense, we saw this very important highway clogged up with information that could have been delivered and distributed in a more cost-effective way. $19 billion worth, and we have yet to see the tip of the iceberg of what you could do with it. The last question I have for you, and it, it's more of a symbolic one, but I, I think that you could speak to this, is there was a, quite a bit of scuttlebutt when the president moved his weekly address from a radio address to a YouTube address. Yes. It, it, how significant do you think that was? Is it, does it signal kind of the, the progression the country's making when it comes to the, to the delivery of information? Well, look at what's happened in just the last few weeks and months. The president said, look, I used all of these tools as part of the campaign to reach out to the American people. And he said he has three basic principles. Number one, we should be as transparent as possible. That does involve some of these capabilities like YouTube and so forth, making that information available. It also means listening. So it's the other end of the spectrum increasing participation in American democracy. Right now at www.whitehouse.gov open, we have a whole program dedicated to listening to the American people. How should we reach policy decisions that will ensure you have a voice in the American democracy? And then last but not least, we need to collaborate. So much of what our experience has been with DTV was that we had to build a national apparatus from beginning to end. That is communicating and translating so that people in every community have access to the service. Imagine if we could redesign all of government services to be as seamless as this process has appeared to have been. That spirit of collaboration will be critical to the policies moving forward. So the move to YouTube for the president, just the beginning. Watch.